Man, what a night Sexpo was last night. <laughs> it was crazy on a Friday night. But, uh, you know, the journey was definitely worth it. As you know, the train all the way up to Town Hall. So, yeah, so I got to Town Hall about, uh, I think, quarter to five. Got off the train, thought I'd walk down to the ICC Centre. Convention center, chill out, have a smoke, um, just enjoy sex, but I guess. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing the, the uh, content creators and the talent you get there, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, no, it's a great event. I really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Amazing women there. Some very good looking women, too. Actually, they're all great performers in my opinion so really uh so huge uh thank you to all the ladies and and all the men too who perform at sexpo as well no but you know i wanted to talk about more what happened with transport sydney trains last night as you know it's the only way i've got to commute into the city so what happened was I left I left Six Belt about eleven PM town hall. I'm looking at me try my, my, my train timetable on my phone. Said I could get a train from Town Hall uh back to Glenfield Station and then all the way home at eleven twenty six. Now I wasn't rushing it. And then it was it was telling me, seriously, that I had to go to Platform 6 at Town Hall Station. This is my app, by the way, I'll tell you. Trip View. So I'm at Platform 6. I'm checking my phone. And all of a sudden, oh, it says you've got to go back on the airport line. Maybe I read it wrong, I don't know, but sometimes when you like you're like, dude, you're in the zone. Yes, anyway, I get on uh, I get to the town hall station, okay. And and it, the, the the station, um, the train person says, Oh, I ask him, is this going uh, back to back to Glenfield via the airport line? He says, oh, no, there's been a delay, signal delay or something. And, you know, how frustrating that is? Because even now, I'm, I'm looking at the timetable. This is, what, 24 hours later. There's trains that are being cancelled. Some services are running behind because of uh, signal repairs at Stanmore earlier today. So, and then not after that, the train town hall was uh, did, uh, just sat there probably about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then uh, he, he said, oh, you've got, to, you've got to get off at Central Station and get on Platform 23 at Central Station. This is about oh, a quarter to 12. Oh, it's probably, yeah, probably about a quarter to 12 last night or today. If you wind the clock back, go 20, 24 something hours later. Yeah, so that's what he said, and then, so we get off at Central Station, I do. No one knows what the hell is going on. I asked one of the Transport Sydney train managers, got sort of an old bloke, he says, oh, go away, I thought he was just a rude prick, to be honest. Could have just been a bit more nicer. And, uh, so we're waiting 
the trains don't know what the hell's going on with this signal. Then we get told to get on this train, right, I'm back on platform 23. And then all of a sudden there's this mass confusion. And then we're told, oh, we've got to get off the train and go on uh, platform 22 to go home because apparently that service was going down to Bankstown and Belmore and Lakemba and all that. Apparently, this, this power outage happened at, what, 5.30 p.m. The trains were delayed. Yeah, and, and not only that, Transport Sydney trains didn't even bother, bother to send bus replacements. If there was going to be a delay for 90 minutes, there was no bus replacement. This is like, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning, midnight, at Central Station. That's not our fault. No one's fault. Because there was no way I was going to get a taxi back. Back to where I am. Hell no. But I, will, I did. I did at Glenford. And then short time later, the train's gone, gone through the air, air, airport line. was probably delayed half an hour at Central Station. Yeah, and then it goes through the airport line. It's in all stop services. So much confusion. Well, when the train came before, it said it was displaying via Lidcombe. And you got one of the station managers on the phone having no clue what the hell's going on. People are, like, uh, like upset. Of course you are. I mean, you want to go home. You're a paying customer. Um, I, I just don't know why Transport Sydney Trains didn't send the bus replacements. So why should have we been stuck? I mean, there was there was a time it took me three hours to get to the city with um, bus replacement from Glenfield Station because of track work. I mean, that's understandable. That's fucking frustrating. When they decide to do track work on the on the week on the weekend during the day, because normally they're meant to be doing track work from I think it's like ten thirty p.m. till like early in the morning. 5, 6 a.m. So instead us commuters, the time it takes for us to get home and you're stressed and you're agitated because of certain things. Well, I'm, I'm pretty pissed off, actually. Like, And so a short time later, I'm on, we're on the, I'm on the train. I'm uploading some content just so I can ease my mind because sex bow was awesome. So I thought, yeah. It was a great night. Yeah, I don't know, and uh, I don't know, some dickhead had his dick out in the photo booth. I don't know with women, but I thought it was a dickhead. It's his bra. I don't know. People do what the hell they want. It's fucking. Oh, but the 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 ladies were amazing, really amazing. And uh, I asked one of one of the ladies who worked for Transport Sydney Trains. She she got off shift. I said, "Do you know what's going on?" She said, "No." Nah, she apparently she was on the same train as I was going back to Glenfield Station. So I did that. We got on the train. We got back to Glenfield. Fine. It was it was a good run back to Glenfield. And then he stops at Glenfield. And then I'm looking at, at uh, the platform going to go back to where I am. So it was delayed for three hours. So if I look, wait about, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes or so. And then one of the train um, who, guy who handles the door was on the phone. Um, yeah, you could hear bloody... A lot of uh, uh, complaining from a lot of the railway workers. They were so confused as to who's going where, what train's going where. No one knew what they were doing because of the signal outage. And actually, speaking of the um, train on platform 23 at Central, it was apparently it was called Crew Relief they were waiting for. 
which I didn't understand. Um, you know, obviously, when you have a delay like this, you can be very agitated because you want to go home. So I left Town Hall probably by the time I walked from the convention to centre. I did an easy walk. I wasn't bolting for it. Uh, I left at about, what, 10 or something like 11 p.m. Left at 11, had an easy walk, had a smoke, go to Town Hall Station. I thought, oh, just not going to rush it. What's the point? Friday night. Yeah, so I did that. And, um... Yeah, and, uh, you know, and it was just a shit, very shit commute home. Yeah, and what happened? Got to Glenfield, and I thought, oh, look, if there's no train coming, I, I might as well just have to get an Uber. And the funny thing, download the Uber app, and I tried to put my card details in, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working with, um, and I was putting it in, I'm checking, Another thing, another Uber driver showed up, and I, I, thought, he, I thought he was my Uber. Turns out it was the wrong car. Maybe about a minute or two later, the taxi shows up at Glenfield Station. And what happened? I just had to get the taxi back to, the, to where I was, where I parked my car. Now, you know, taxi fare, that was about $60, but you know what? As long as I got home, and that's the main thing, I got home about 2 o'clock this morning. Uh, you know, by the time you unwind, you have a shower, you chill out, you zone out, because your mind's going 100 mile an hour from Sexpo. Like, in any concert you go to, your mind's going to be... You can't sleep, and that's normal. Footy game, whatever. Um, oh, I don't know. Probably only got, what, four hours sleep, two, three hours. And I woke up, I don't know, 10 a.m. this morning, had a coffee, and I'm thinking, look, unfortunate circumstances do happen at times. That things that you can't control, but I'm pissed off with the Transport Sydney trains for not providing, you know, bus services to get us home. Um, because we want to go home, and I don't know why they couldn't do that. Dry. I'm. I'm. I'm not going to get into all the politics involved. I don't think there is any politics involved with train timetables and the stuff ups. And unfortunately, we're paying a government department to commute. So us customers have a right to have the best service as we can and to get to and from our destination. Now, I mean, this happens at the airport. Airline companies get delayed for a lot of reasons. Things do happen and it's... You just feel like you're. Um, it's, it is an anxious time for everyone because we do want to go home, and there's some things are not their fault. Um, as I said, I checked the timetable now. Twenty four hours later, there's still delays. Twenty three minutes, or they're looking at extra trains to go that way. You, uh, you know, you try your best. To playing your trip. Now, I'll just say, if I had have gotten a taxi from Town Hall back to where I was, it would have cost whoa, off peak time nearly 200 bucks. So, you know what? I thought, look, I'm not going to wait three hours for a train. I'll just pay the taxi fare and that's it. And it was fine. You know, as long as we're home, it's not, not my fault, not your fault. None of our fault, but it was just, uh, yeah, 
not happy. But funny enough, my zipper and my jacket got stuck. And, uh, girl, that's, I'm like trying to open my zipper and my jacket at six, but I'm trying to open it. And I left my smokes in my pocket, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, my zipper's stuck. So. But you know what? It was all worth it at the end of the day because I had the time of my life. Um, you know. Fortunately, you know, you just got to go, get out of the house. Things do happen. Um, yeah, you always just got to be prepared, I guess. No, but uh, the other thing too is I saw on X the opening ceremony for the Olympics in Paris. Well, is it in Paris this year? I don't give a shit. Was just so derogatory and disrespectful to the Christian faith. Now, how how could you be so low and slack to do that? Because they wouldn't go and bother um, mocking the uh, the Muslim religion. They wouldn't be mocking Allah or Muhammad. But yet, these dickheads in these doing these um, gender equality, uh, I f- don't get this, dressing up like a blue man is pretty much disrespecting the last supper, the uh, Christian uh, faith. The Christian people out there, which was just disgusting, you know, um, each to their own beliefs, and you do that at the Olympic Games? Like, what the hell has gone on to the point where the the Olympics this year want to start getting all gender equality and and going around making fun of? people's faith, you've pissed off a lot of people by doing it. Um, you, you, you pissed me off for letting some dickheads in France that, oh, I don't know, they've got all sorts of weird things going on with their abstract art. You know, I've got nothing against, you know, people's religious beliefs. You believe what you want to believe in. But as soon as you want to start taking it too far and getting derogatory, you've you've not only switched me off the Olympic Games, I don't even want to watch it. No, forget it. You've pissed me off. You've pissed off a lot of people. I mean, the, the, the guys should be in jail, those performers. They should all be, like, copping it by the law because that's just not cool. You really shame on you for that. That's something you're gonna live with for the rest of your life. Um, the people on X are saying that this is all satanic stuff and it's all the end times. I mean, I don't get involved in those, but to do that, are you for real? Like, how low and slack can you get to go and mock the Last Supper of? Uh... Jesus at the Olympic Games I hear a fucking moron you are I'm sorry I, I just gotta say it I'll say it as they are as it is on this show yeah the, the, I'm, I'm fed up with these woke people woke CEOs woke politicians that uh, that are encouraging this stuff because we voted them in and basically what happened this is what we get as a society you get all these woke performers performing I thought this stuff was just some of the most stupidest I, I don't even know what to call it I was just switched it off So, you know what, thanks a lot. You've lost viewers for the Olympics. 
Um, in France, I'm not sure if you'd want to travel to France. France is a France, Paris, whatever. Apparently, Paris is a shithole anyway. Um, they overhype these so-called tourist destinations to the point, but it turns out to be a huge shithole. Um, yeah, no, you, you've really pissed me off. When I see that stuff on the X, like, come on. Yeah, that's... That is just not cool. All right. That is just really not cool at all. Yeah, I, I, I felt the need to have a show today um, about the Transport Sydney trains issues going on. Um, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's not right. It's not cool. It's just not cool at all. Um, yeah, where, where, what the hell's going on in, in the Olympics? To do that in the opening ceremony. I mean, how low and slack can you get? That's just not right at all. <coughs> Sorry. That's just not right, not cool. You know that. But again, this is what... Uh, what we have is woke politicians who go around and are encouraging this sort of um, behaviour from people. I mean, I'm not happy at all about that. Yeah, when you see that stuff on there, that's just not cool. Not cool at all. Really not cool. But uh, I feel that... You know, I guess moving ahead, right? And uh, trying to just put all this stuff behind us. I always try to look at what, well, what's what's the good going on? What what do I like to watch? What do I like to do? Uh you know, there's dickheads in the world that want to do stupid shit like that at the Olympics. That's so derogatory, man. Shame on you. It was one of the weirdest acts I've ever seen. Now, as far as that goes, right, I don't know what Joe Biden's completely pissed off a lot of people. Um, Anthony Albanese too, with the cost of living crisis too, with inflation. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're reading the news that people can't go out to events because of you know, living expenses, um, especially if you're working full-time, you pay all your rent, you're bored, and, uh, 
or what needs to, you know, or you, your uh, living expenses, of course. And then after that, you, you really don't have much left over as well. Yeah, I feel that Yeah, we need more, pretty much more change to happen uh, in Australia, of course, because I just don't know where we can go from here, right? Um... Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it just becomes like a shit fight at the end of the day. You know, the NDIS to these government departments become a shit fight with funding and all this crap. I just get over, I'm fed up with it. Uh, I mean, you you just get to the point where you just want stuff to be done, uh, pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the problem we've got, I guess, is... What's uh what do what do uh what do us Australians want for change in the world right now? That's what uh I'd like to know as well. Uh, the weather right now, where I am, 9.7 degrees Celsius. Feels like 7.9 7 degrees Celsius. Uh, low of 5 degrees, top of 14 degrees tomorrow. 1 to 7 millimetres of rain. Tomorrow, sunny, low of 5 degrees, top of 14. Monday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 5 degrees, top of 16. Tuesday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 3 degrees, top of 16, no rain forecasted for the rest of the next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 5 degrees, top of 17. Thursday, low of sunny, partly cloudy, low of 6 degrees, top of 17. Friday, Sunny, partly cloudy, low of 6 degrees, top of 17. Saturday, cloudy, low of 5 degrees, top of 19 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I was like, get back to Glenfield Station last last night, and it's, it's like cold. It's about, well, 1 o'clock in the morning. So... Yeah, the things that I practice gratitude for is being able to get that taxi service back to where I was. I mean, I was just happy to get, you know, I was just thankful to have a taxi. Those are the things that... Uh, Yeah, you got to have gratitude for, I guess. Yeah, but anyway, in Formula One, the uh, thing uh, they're doing practice in Belgium. Yeah, Max Verstappen had to get a part of his engine changed, so he will lose 10 grid places. Uh, yeah, he was uh, pretty much pushing it quite a fair bit in practice, getting good lap times as well. 
Um, yeah, what else? Yeah, good lap times um, at the Belgium Grand Prix. I think, uh, does that Formula One have like a, a mini summer break or a mini hiatus? Until their next Grand Prix, I don't know. But uh, hopefully Sergio Perez can get a pole position for Red Bull and take the win for Red Bull, get some more points for Red Bull. The co-driver for Max Verstappen. Uh, that, that would be really great to see that. Um, yeah, no, that, that would be awesome. Two Red Bulls on the podium. Yeah. Oh, there. Uh... Yeah. So the, the 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 Grand Prix after this will be on the twenty third of the twenty fifth of August in the Netherlands. They head off to, so they do get a mini. Do they call it like a mid year break? Um. Netherlands, and it's Italy, Azerbaijan, then it's Singapore, United States, Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, Qatar, and then finally Abu Dhabi to finish off the season. Um, qualifying will be in two hours, so obviously I won't be watching it. I'll just watch the highlights. Um, still playing Formula One Fantasy as well, so... Like to see how well the drivers go with, uh, yeah, they're qualifying and, yeah, how they can push it as well and who can, uh, get the best times as well. Because that's what we want. That is what we want. Um, Formula One is one of the hardest car racing in the world because it, <sighs> team owners are changing, or some team owners they resign, they move teams, and then. All this track limits bullshit to deal with from the FIA and DRS zones and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, you do you do your best, of course, to Yeah, get that pole position. You know, drivers are just one race away from getting sacked and they're so under so much pressure. What I don't like about Formula One is if someone yeah, it does happen quite a fair bit, another driver bumps into you. You're the one who ends up getting a penalty if they cause damage to your car. But then if they damage your car, oh, the stewards let them get away with it. Well, like, that's not fair. Um, to do that. But, uh, no, that's... Uh, yeah, that's car racing, I guess, and can get very uh, overwhelming at times. Yeah, to the point where it just gets pretty much too hard to drive the car. So that's the... Uh, Other issues that drivers have to face in car racing. It's pretty much...
Yeah, knowing that, um... Yeah. And basically just have a good car race. Yeah, but, <clears throat> but guys, I don't know what's going on with Rumble uh, lately as well. When I, Whenever I tried to go live on this thing, it doesn't work for some reason. And then I'm constantly fiddling around with it just to host a, a room. Social audio is what I want to do. I don't know if Rumble's got a bug in the app or they need to fix this stuff up because it's starting to get really frustrating that I'm trying to... Um... Yeah, host a... Uh podcast and then it's like it's just getting uh, too difficult just to start a room but um, I don't know yeah Rumble's got to fix it I'll let them deal with it and that's what I'll do guys yeah, guys, thanks for listening in tonight. Um, always love doing the podcast here. Please subscribe, like, share, turn on notifications. I publish a new podcast every Friday at 6 p.m. Sydney, Australia time. Good night. Good morning. Bye for now. <laughs>